Now I'm joined in the observation room with Mr. Alan Garrett, the museum's curator. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Garrett. It's my pleasure. Now, I know the park is called John James Audubon State Park. Well, can you tell us exactly who is John James Audubon? John James Audubon was an artist and naturalist. He came to Henderson in 1810, uh, made a name for himself in art in years after that. He became very famous for his paintings, especially of birds. His passion was for birds, and his whole life was just devoted to uh, the concept of painting birds and studying and learning about birds. He went on to do a major publication known as The Birds of America, which to this day is the largest publication ever done of uh, bird paintings. Uh, the size of it is over 39 and a half inches by 27 inches, and is as I said, the largest book of that nature ever done. Uh, 435 paintings, all of the life-size drawings of the birds and their natural habitats. And his fame grew out of this, and spread throughout the, the country. He went from that to doing a book of mammals, which became equally famous for, and it just really became a legend in terms of uh, American history and American art. So whose idea was it to come up with, this, with the idea of the park? Well, the Henderson, um, in the early years, around 1900, had a, was forming a library, and it was an individual by the name of Susan Tolles. Susan had grown up hearing stories of Audubon. Her family knew Audubon. Her great-great-grandfather was a friend of Audubon's, and Audubon had actually done a portrait of um, an uncle of hers. And she was, knew Audubon so well from these stories, and so she began collecting artifacts and asking people, well, do you have anything relating to Audubon and paintings and things that she began to collect together in hopes of making a museum. And then along came the Depression, and the government was able, the Susan, as well as individuals here in the town, petitioned the federal government through the CCC program, the Civilian Conservation Corps, to develop a park and name it in honor of John Audubon. Uh, Susan came along following that with the idea of, well, if we're building a park for him, we need to have a museum to honor Audubon as well, whereby they went to the um, Works Project Administration and got approval for the construction of the buildings, and the park and the museum were, were founded and developed and opened in 1938. I know that you said John James Audubon's passion was birds, so is that why there's a nature preserve here? That's uh, exactly it. Uh, we're one of the unique locations where we can tie in Audubon's paintings uh, and the world-renowned collection that we have here with art and with nature. And it's one of the few places we can have that wonderful connection to teach young people as, and adults about the heritage of Audubon, the heritage of wildlife, and nature and what we have today. So we've got 700 acres in the park, most of it in a nature preserve for studying wildlife and, and just for casual recreation, as well as the observation area that we're in today to observe the birds and enjoy, and just enjoy nature. How did the park come to acquire the 700 acres of land? In order for them to uh, be considered to have this created as a park and take it before the federal government uh, that was considering such things with the CCC program, they had to have a commitment of a certain amount of land uh, for, the, uh, for the project to begin with to know that this would go through. They approached a number of landowners with that and a couple of the local uh, gentlemen uh, gladly donated, began to donate some land to us. So the beginning of the park uh, came to be about 150 to 200 acres of, of ground, which was just the minimum that was required for the CCC program. And once that was acquired and they began to consider the park, other individuals just thought it was such a wonderful idea. We had donations of land. There were other individuals that sold the land to the federal government for the creation of the park at a reduced rate uh, uh, with that, and that began to develop. And then over the years, uh, it went from about 500 acres about that time to additional land purchases uh, to add to the park to protect the wildlife and protect the uh, forest area here on what's known as, uh, as Wolf Hills. So besides the museum, what other attractions does the park offer? Well, we have a recreation lake where you can rent canoes and paddle boats and fish at. We've got about seven miles of hiking trails. Um, we also have a golf course and uh, cabins that you can rent. 
to stay in as well as our campground. And through the summer months, we have programs for the campers, which includes anybody can come from Evansville, Henderson, anywhere is welcome to come to that. But we call them camp campground programs. We have various activities from uh, fire, you know, campfires, from roasting marshmallows and making s'mores, to playing bingo, to uh, art programs of, of teaching about drawing birds and animals, uh, and doing, uh, we bring in a potter every year, and the kids get to make little pots. And uh, lots of various activities and things that they can do there at the campground. And, uh, and just walks, uh, identification walks, such as tree walks or bird walks, and just little things that people can enjoy. Are there any seasonal activities that go on at the park that are special? We do. We have a couple of events uh, in the fall of the year. There's a big craft festival sponsored by Grad. We have the Grad Craft Fair that goes on in October, which is a really big, big event for this area with uh, hundreds of vendors and thousands of people come out for that. We also have uh, other activities, we, uh, special programs, we have another art show that we do in the fall of the year. We usually try to have a special exhibit inside, uh, this, uh, a change in our inside exhibits in our exhibit area downstairs. Uh, we all, our nature programs continue. We tend to move uh, inside. Cold weather starts to set in. We have inside programs. Uh, the, the Kentucky uh, Humanities Council has a wonderful program called Chautauqua Talks. These are people that are first person imitators of individuals and we usually try to bring one or two of those in during the winter months which are entertaining and educational as well and give a local flavor. We do things like Daniel Boone or we, Lucy Audubon will be coming this year to you know, speak. And we, ask, we do have various things going on. What attraction does the park offer that most people are drawn